Melbourne is a sobering reminder that the numbers are not abating. Australia is grappling with a spike in COVID-19 cases, just as authorities are winding back restrictions across the country. When three quarters of the population are starting to think that it's kind of over, then that's a serious cause for concern. The number of locally acquired cases has almost tripled in a one-week period, with the majority of the new infections coming from Victoria. Now, fears of a second wave of infections are taking hold as Melbourne struggles to contain its coronavirus hotspots. We're not into catastrophic second wave by any means. However, it's obviously worrying. Australia's first wave of COVID-19 infections hit in late March, peaking at 460 on March 28. Since then, the number of cases has been on a steady decline, with some minor blips along the way. That was until Victoria's recent dramatic spike. Daily confirmed cases have been in the double digits, and critically, the majority are being traced back to community transmission, as opposed to cases imported from overseas travellers. And it's the community-acquired cases that are causing concern for public health authorities. A spike in these cases means there is an active source of infection in the community, making it difficult to control the spread. Our first wave was really very small. The reality is that there are still 25 million people in Australia who are vulnerable to this disease. The surge in Victorian cases has largely been blamed on family-to-family -family transmission. So the combination of proximity and time make you at much greater risk. Victorian health officials suggest some people have not followed the advice to limit the number of people allowed into a home and didn't practice physical distancing or follow proper hygiene either. Another theory accounting for the spike has blamed some Victorians who have been tested but didn't isolate before receiving their results. If you go and get tested, you must stay at home until you receive your test result. This is such a knife edge. If we don't keep on top of it, it's going to get out of control so easily. Restrictions have been in place around Australia for months now, and people are pushing the boundaries. Scenes like this are now commonplace around the country, and experts say Australians' backseat approach to addressing the threat of coronavirus could be disastrous. We have paid the economic price, but we have not paid the health price. If we let this off the leash, then we're going to pay the health price as well.